just like last time. Had another beautiful litter of eight. She's having her lunch right now. Look at this nest that she built. Okay, see this? This is all nice and dry, This all this fur. So, so far the roof is working. See, I brought this out. I brought this out past the front of the cage so that this would drip. Any Anything that didn't go to the sides or to the back would hopefully drip off out here past the nest box. And because remember, this is how we lost Belvie's last litter. Remember, we had the storm that blew in and it got the nest box and everything so wet and it caused the kits in there to get too cold and die. And I'm just doing what I can until I can build. I'd love to, I'd love to be able to just build buildings out here with nice tin roofs on them and what have you, but I just can't do it. Not right now, anyway. Uh, maybe someday. But I am definitely, in the meantime, trying to do, we're trying to do the best we can do. This is Eve's little baby. She too was bred with cornflake. He was he before Saw Guy came. He was our only brood buck. Cornflake was, and you know he's a red-eyed white. And look how like it ain't gonna be long. They be getting their eyes open. Oh yeah, they're 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 approaching that age. Yes. Um, in fact, you never know if you went through the whole litter. There might be one in there with the eye starting to peek open a little bit. But nice litter of red-eyed whites. Uh, beautiful litter of eight again like I said and you can see can you see that in the camera Dana mm -hmm. see them all nestled in there nice and warm you see heads and butts and there <laughs> there's but there's well there's seven of them in there I've got one in my hand here but there's eight in there and they're nice and warm just snug as little bugs in a rug see see this one's all the way see this one's all curled up here See when I go to bother him. In fact, I think that one was trying to get his eye open. Was it? Okay, well, no hurry, no hurry. But they're that they're that age, and uh, as temperature requires, all this fur right here, Eve will actually bring some of her straw and or some hair, and she'll actually pull more. She'll either pull the hair and straw off the babies or add more as needed depending on the temperature. Remember inside, Jessie was adding more. She thinks it's cold. Well, Eve had this all. In fact, I should open that up because that's the way Eve had it. She knows, she knows, she's mama, she's the boss. She knows what she's doing. So there, but they're all nestled in there and they're nice and warm. They're starting to get fur anyway and they can regulate their own temperature a little bit better. As long as they're still together in the nest, they keep each other warm. And it's just, you can come out here, especially we've had some, we've had some uh, upper 40 and or, uh, low 50 degree nights even here in, 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 in May in Northeast Arkansas. It's been kind of a cool year so far, believe it or not. And you can actually come out here and hold your hand like this. You can see my hand? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it had that wide angle of view. But you can hold your hand like here, and you can just feel the heat radiating up off this nest. It, it's just so neat. But, uh, they keep each other warm until they get a certain amount of hair in. and when, Usually they get that right amount of hair in about the time they get their eyes open, and then a few days later, they'll start occasionally jumping up around, running around the nest box. And then pretty soon, they'll be up in here bugging Mama all the time, just like uh, Belvie's babies were in there. Uh, and now, uh, and... We have things that we do whenever that it's time to do that, and I think Dana later on this week is going to make y'all a video showing what we do when these guys are when these guys reach a point where they don't need the nest box no more. Which it's these obviously do still need their nest box, but we actually and I haven't made one to put on here yet, but we're actually going to start putting doors on top of these and uh, making J clip hinges on the side of the opening here and lay it down and wire it down when the babies don't need to be in there. And then when they do, we'll make it to where that door will hinge up against the wall here and out of the way of the door opening and all that. On these bigger cages, that's a lot easier to do. Uh, on the cages inside, I put the door opening too much to one side on those, and a lot of times it's hard to make that door hinge up right here and miss 
where the door opens because I put them, I put the door openings to one side instead of centering them like I probably should have. But I was planning on, I, I didn't know at the time that I was going to do the strictly alfalfa hay diet and I was leaving room to put a, a big J feeder in here if I should need to, you know, for pellets or, or what have you, or grain or something. <laughs> and I wanted to have room for the large size. Because I knew there, I was probably going to have those in there with big litters and I was going to need a big feeder if I did that to hold enough feed to feed mama uh, who would be producing some milk plus feeding what all the little babies would eat at that age. So, <laughs> but yeah, here, I can, uh, you can step right here. So, so in the opening of the, yeah, there they are. <laughs> But that's pretty much what they do until they get their eyes open. I was showing this one that's picking that's picking it out in from underneath the hay over here. <laughs> now you have to be careful of that. Where is it? Right there. Oh, right there. You have to be careful of that. That that probably wouldn't be a problem because if it was cold, it would pull back in. But um, in the cold months. Just to kind of throw in a little sidebar here, in the cold months, we actually will cut out a piece of cardboard box, lay it down here in the bottom, and let them put the, build their nest on top of that cardboard box. And a lot of times, it will actually, instead of just having them pick up their straw and carry it in here and make the nest the way they want it, we'll put the cardboard in and then put a bunch of straw in there, because if we don't, first thing mama's gonna do is pull that cardboard box out of there. Uh, We've had it happen. She don't like it in there for some reason, even though, but it, it is necessary and it's a big help in the winter. We even put sides up here to help block. Uh, these guys, if they have if they have litters out here in the open in the winter, they will actually have, we will have some kind of wood fastened to the corners and we will actually staple plastic around at least this corner here. Um, and we will pro actually we'll probably end up putting plastic on the north side of both of them because there's going to be you know the north side is to my left and the north wind is going to be able to kind of whip around the red building and come in between the two and it'll make like a little little wind current through here i think and it'll be really really cold so we'll probably put some plastic on the north side or on the west side here and possibly part of the north side here so that that wind coming in through the two buildings it'll kind of go away or go around hopefully and give them a wind block because rabbits are very very accustomed or suited for cold climates as long as you keep them dry and you and you keep and, and you keep them out of drafty area you know you can't have it in which this would be more you, you, they need a wind block in other words is what I'm saying it's not so much a draft but a wind block and uh, we put like I say we put cardboard around here and they'll build a nest and then we'll put a piece of cardboard in the very bottom. This time of the year, that would make the nest too hot, even though we haven't got as hot a weather this year as we normally do. Okay, moving on down here. These are two of our bucks. And these two guys, I think we may have to move Pepper because these two guys, I think, have been fighting. Um, I'll show you, I just noticed this a little bit ago before we started the video I was out here. And, <laughs> come here, come here little buddy. See, the bucks are, you know, they don't usually mind being petted, but they don't like to be pulled out of the cage, and they're just not used to it. But see his nose? And I think these guys have been fighting through Ooh. the through the cage section in between. Ouch! He nipped me! <laughs> I put him right here. But uh, they've been fighting, see right here? He's got a little sore, and it looks like he's got some hair missing from around his nose there. And I think these guys have been fighting in between the cage partition and cornflake doesn't seem any worse for wear, but I guess Pepper being the young, the, the smaller of the two, even though he's actually older than cornflake, uh, we're going to move him over here. Oh, easy, buddy. Easy, buddy. There. Now you can go put your smell over all of that. Okay. I'm not sure which one it is, but one of these guys irritate rabbits to no end every time we park one of our does in between them 
or next to them, <clears throat> they end up getting really grumpy and irritable. And I think it's one of these guys are, will just want to irritate their neighbor to no end. And I think uh, I'm, I'm planning on eventually making a, se a, a, a separate area with cages just to house the bucks so that I don't have to put those. He's got a sore on him too. He does. Yeah, on this left side. Well, yeah, but he's not. Yeah, he's got a little spot there, but it's not nothing like what. Uh, Wrong with him. I didn't think. I didn't even think about that. I moved him. <clears throat> but anyway, it's all right. We we got it covered, and and we will. That's fresh hay, so we you will check Pepper after the video, and if he it doesn't appear that he needs any medical attention, I believe he'll heal up just fine on his own. But if he does, we'll take care of it. You can rest assured he'll be just fine. But the problem was these guys fighting right through this little wire partition in between the cages and they, they put your noses up there and they try to bite one another. And it looks like Pepper got bit, but and I guess Cornflake had a little bitty nip on his nose. But Pepper got the worst of it out of this out of this deal, so but he is okay. It doesn't appear to be, uh, you know, infected or, you know, there's no pus or anything like that. It doesn't look like so. He'll be just fine. But anyway, this is Cornflake. He loves his bread. That's why he's coming up to the cage like he is. He loves for me to give him bread and, uh, and what have you. And so anytime he sees me come around, he's gonna, he comes up to the cage. That's what makes him so tame, I guess. Now if I open up, and I usually poke his bread in there to him, you can see on his ears, see the urine stains where these guys have been spraying each other and themselves. Uh, just bucks are, ne are necessary evil, but when, they're, when they get in breeding mode or what have you, they, they can be really, really nasty. Really nasty. But uh, he's a good buck. But uh, once we get things geared up and some things changed around, the saw guy is going to become primary herd buck, and we may have some others. But <clears throat> I may have told you this before, but saw guy and sangria obviously are both pedigreed New Zealands as well as marble. Now, what we are eventually going to do is our older, or, or I'm sorry, our bigger meat rabbits like Eve uh, and Jesse, Velvy and Ginger. Some of those, not all, but some of those are going to go away to make room for pedigreed does to take, the, take their place. Um, <clears throat> now there's a couple of those does that we are just really, really attached to and they're not going anywhere. Uh, they'll probably be here until, you know, we have to, we have to put them a little headstone out here in the yard somewhere. Uh, you know. Not that we're looking forward to that, but we know that's the only thing certain in life is death, so it's coming. And, uh, but cornflake later on will probably go away. Um, pepper and all the Netherlands, they are not pedigreed stock. We may try to transition over to pedigreed stock. We eventually, we want to get into pedigreed stock on every breed that we have. Why? Well... If they're pedigreed, you can be pretty sure that, number one, they're purebred. And if somebody goes to the trouble of keeping a pedigree, that means that they've got some pretty good stock in most cases. And they're quite possibly show quality. Okay, so two things happen. One, we're going to have some bunnies that hopefully we can raise up as juniors and we can start showing those for ourselves. Great. It also means that while we sell bunnies now, it also means that rather than just sell meat bunnies, you know, people that have for pets or meat, we can also sell breeding stock for other people to other people that may want to show their rabbits or they may want to breed show, rat, show rabbits of their own, just like what we're doing. So we'll see, you know, it's just a little something to kind of help uh, moving forward uh, future wise, you know, on the homestead and we're just looking forward to it and, and to be to be quite honest with you we love our rabbits we love them all okay regardless of their pedigree or their lineage or anything but that being said the pedigree rabbits that we have on this place 
they are just so absolutely beautiful compared to the others that we have not beautiful they're all beautiful i should say this different they conform to the standard that the american rabbit breeders association has for those rabbit and they just look the way they're supposed to it doesn't mean i said that wrong it doesn't mean they're any more beautiful than the others we love all of our rabbits and to us they're all every each and every one are beautiful but we're not gonna we're gonna go with pedigree animals uh, if if for one thing, if we're selling stock and, we're, and they're pedigreed, we know they're purebred and we're not going to be, and, and, and in the future it's going to be, if they're not show quality, that somebody can either show them or breed show quality stock out of them, we're not going to sell them with a pedigree. So just because we have pedigreed animals, it doesn't mean that every animal that leaves uh, Crow's Nest Rabbitry is going to have a pedigree. Because if it's not fitting to show, if it's a pet quality only or meat quality only animal, there's no need for it to have a pedigree. And it's not gonna leave here with one so somebody can take that rabbit and, and contaminate, in my, in my words, uh, the rabbit population with animals that are not show quality. And, or, or call them show quality and try to sell them to unsuspecting buyers who don't know a show quality rabbit from a non-show quality rabbit. So uh, it, it's just our way. We're, we're kind of trying to, as well as our own, we're trying to eventually get to where we can police breeding a, that others are doing as well because there are some there are some breeders out there, folks. I mean, I, I don't like to talk about anybody, but there are some people out there who breed unscrupulously and... And we're just kind of, I guess we're just kind of moving on to the next step. We want, you know, we want to get to that point where we can, uh, where we have better quality and we want other people to be getting better quality when they buy a rabbit from us. Uh, in turn, yeah, that means they're going to bring a little bit more money when they sell. But, you know, you get what you pay for, right? Um, we're not trying to get rich here, but... You know, it takes a lot out of our household budget right now on a monthly basis to take care of these guys. We just want to get them to where they can pretty much, you know, we can sell off, we can sell the, the animals that we don't need for ourselves and cover care, maintenance, and feed costs of the rest. That'll help if these guys, you know, this is, if you'll remember, we told you that salt this, this little guy or girl doesn't have a name. What I've done is Salt had three. And then remember I told you earlier we gave Hershey to Salt. There's Hershey. See the little chocolate? Uh, which of these rabbits just don't belong here? <laughs> anyway, these two guys, are. we weaned those yesterday. They are a month old. They are doing very good. They've been eating. They've been eating for a while and eating very well. But what we did was the two bigger rabbits, this one, if you'll remember, we had Mufasa. I didn't mention yet, but Mufasa and Sarabi, our lionhead pair, they went to a new home yesterday. Um, we miss them, but I made a decision. We were just getting too many breeds, and I've got another breed that we don't even have yet that I'm hoping to be able to raise in the future. And... I don't know, the passion just wasn't there, really, as far as the lionhead breed was concerned. And so we decided that we wanted to let those guys go. And they went to a great home. And honestly, I had not even, I had not even advertised Sarabi for sale because I was just really having that deal where, what, how am I gonna manage this? Because I'm not gonna let her go to just anywhere. Well, as it happened, somebody that I was fairly certain would give them a good home, mention something to me about lion heads, and I said, hey, I've got a pair. And to, to my, not to my surprise, but to my relief, they said, okay, we'll take them. And so they are in good hands. They no longer live at Crow's Nest Rabbitry, but they are in good hands. Uh, they, they actually left yesterday. I got pictures last night of them in their new cages and they are all they are all settling in nicely 
but this is Mufasa's last litter with us. He actually had this litter with Salt, who you'll remember is a Netherland dwarf. Well, we were just trying to mix things up a little bit. Okay, so you'll see this one. Look, this is a doe. I do know this one is a doe, but it looks, it has markings just like Mufasa had, except these markings around its eye is a little bit dark. Mufasa's markings were a little bit more of a chestnut color or a chocolate color. Okay, so I'm gonna put, oops, put her back. Here, she's trying to crawl up my arm here. Here, go in there. Oh, I don't have enough hands to handle these little guys when they go. To... This is a, uh, this to me, this looks chinchilla, okay? <laughs> um, if it's called something else, you know, correct me as usual. Uh, I need to learn. You guys have taught me a lot. You really have about colors. That's why a lot of times I like to show you my my kits because I don't know what color to call some of them. Well, you guys are really good about, uh, you know, chiming in there and letting me know, say, hey, that's a chestnut or that's a torque or that's a otter or something, you know. But these two, we, these two, we weaned. We left the smaller of her original babies and Hershey with her. Two reasons. Remember that video we did about mastitis? You, leave, you take part of the litter away and leave part of the litter, that lets her dry up slowly. She's going to cut back because she's only got to produce milk for two babies now. Okay? She's going to cut back in her milk production and she's going to do it gradually. Now in a few days or a week or whatever, we'll probably take this little rascal and put, put him or her on the chinchillas, there's a male and a female, and I don't remember which is which. But we'll take this, this little fella right here and put over here with the brothers and sisters, and it'll be, and it'll be to wean. And Hershey, being she's so much smaller in size compared to all of her litter mates who Twix has, we'll let Hershey have all the milk for maybe a week or so and, and try to get her up to size. We've done this before and it seems to be fairly successful. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Um, but uh, poor Salt, she's looking kind of rough. She's ready. To, she's ready to get all these babies away so she can uh, she can have some time alone, and then we'll give her probably a week or a week or two or whatever. We'll just have to play it by ear, and then she'll probably be ready to rebreed. Um, <clears throat> but I, I think she has, she, her and Pearl have both lost weight since they've had their litters. And so I think they're going to, rather than follow the schedule we usually follow, I think, uh, I think before they're rebred this time, I think Salt and Pearl are both going to get an extra, uh, week or two to gain back up and get back up to their old selves. You know, they're just, uh, <clears throat> They just didn't. Uh, they just didn't maintain their weight this time around with these litters like they have in the past, and it could be because they're getting a little older. We don't know, but we're just gonna, you know, we're not uh, we're not slave drivers here, or don't intend to be. So we're gonna give them some time to get their health back to what it should be, and then evaluate and determine or try to determine whether or not uh, or when they're ready to rebreed. I will, <clears throat> you can see this, you can see this little rascal pretty good right here in the corner. Yeah, we handle them quite a bit. They don't, they don't like to be picked up, but they're not as bad as Twix's litter in there. Them little rascals are, even though we handle them so much, them guys are a little still skittish. Uh-oh, he's a little wet. <laughs> this is Hershey. She's a chocolate, obviously. <laughs> she's a pretty little rascal, but she's small compared to her litter mates and um, now these she's not really supposed to be as big as these guys but you got to keep in mind these guys are long hair so a lot of their size is fur fluff okay uh, these guys should if, if they had the same length of hair all of these bunnies would be pretty equal in size except like I said Hershey is small but she was the runt in the litter anyway 
uh, of the five of the five that weren't peanuts that is she was a little smaller at birth but see they're pretty close to the same size it's just <gasps> oh baby oh goodness you're gonna have to quit that oh you scare me come here you scared mama too come here calm down calm down my goodness here we'll hold you like that here just sit up there anyway they're close to the same size it's just that these their hair is so much longer you know you can when you can see how long that fur is it's just fluffy and it's it's the lion head get in there sweetie here now you go but it's the lion head that you know they've got longer fluffier fur and it makes them look bigger but but they're really not but her litter uh, hershey's litter mates who are still with mama twix are bigger than that so Hershey should actually be a little bit bigger than what she is uh, and uh, I mean and, and we've determined that visually by looking at them and we've also confirmed it by putting them all on the scales and there's a few ounces uh, difference in uh, the ones that Twix still has and this one but if we hadn't fostered her over to salt I don't think we would have kept Hershey I think we would have lost her um, <clears throat> so even though she's a little small, it's still a good thing. You know, it worked out because we do have her. And, uh, this, is, this is Smitty. This is Smitty. I recently weighed him, and he is up to weight. Unfortunately, all the shows in our driving range region, whatever you want to call it, all those shows are over until about <clears throat> September, I believe. So he's, he's made minimum weight for show. He's a junior mini Rex buck. I think you've seen him before. He's my little buddy. He's another one that comes in and likes to come in and watch TV and run around on the couch and what have you. He is about three months old and we discovered by accident the other night that he is he is starting to mature into a from a little boy buck into a man buck. Luckily there was no inadvertent breeding that happened. He we caught we caught the situation quick enough and prevented anything from going on. I don't think he's actually able to breed a doe yet, but he was trying to go through the motions, let's put it that way. So he is, this will be, when he gets ready, about the time, he should be ready about the time, about the time he gets ready, we should have, Twix should be ready to rebreed and have all her babies weaned. And so hopefully I th we think that's going to work out. He'll be ready to breed at just about the right time. And so uh, we can get uh, Twix ready to rebreed and back into rotation. But that's going to be that's going to be a little while down the road yet. Probably another month or so. But uh, oh. he's just a beautiful little buck. We're hoping to get him to the show in the meantime. But that's going to have to wait till September. And I don't know what his weight's going to be by September. So... <clears throat> He might be too big. But anyway, <clears throat> that's what's going on in the rabbit tree. Excuse me. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.